Good morning. I'm back. Thank you for stopping in today. I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. I have my coffee this morning. Yes, it is Starbucks. I love Starbucks. I wanted to come on video today to talk to you, kind of have a coffee and chit chat type of morning. I've been in a mood of reflection lately and I want to sit back and have a conversation, hopefully get to know some of you as you learn me as well. If you watched my last video, I spoke a little bit about I was recently laid off and it wasn't unexpected. I knew it was coming, so I had plenty of time to prepare. Lots of people tend to leave a job, um, when, especially when there's money on the table, and that's just not something that I do. It gave me a lot of time to prepare myself for this season, and I intend to enjoy it. I have been compensated really well for this severance. What I wanted to talk about today is, well, I was thinking, if I had to do it all again, what three things would I do differently? Have you ever thought about that? There are things I wouldn't change. Of course, you know, having my daughter going through that whole experience, but there are some things that I would do a little different. And I'll give you three of mine, and you'll be thinking about what things you would do differently. First thing I think I would do a little differently, I probably would be more intentional in my relationships, uh, especially in my 20s and my 30s. Those were my, you are so stupid and so dumb type years. I learned some lessons the hard way, but the best thing that came out of that was my daughter. I was previously married I was young. I don't recommend anybody to get married. If you're 22, 20, 22 to 26, don't get married. Don't get married. You have no idea who you are. I would be more selective in the people I put in my space. You got to be careful who you bring into your space. But when you're young, you're in love and all of that, you just let any and every cute fine thing come into your space. But it does set a foundation for who you are. And I do accept that those mistakes that I made definitely set the groundwork and the foundation for the drive that I have today. Um, listen to your parents, definitely. I wish I had listened to my parents about my relationships. But anyway, I digress. That was number one. Be intentional with the people you bring into your circle. Be more selective. And for sure, don't spend six to eight years in a relationship thinking that it's ever going to change. Because it's not. You can't change people. You can only change yourself and move yourself out of those bad relationships. Not that they were bad. They just were too long. And trust me, after a year or two, you know when it's time to go. Your body, our um, intuition tells us when it's not right. There's no sense in sticking around. Just go, girl. Just go. Number two, I would be better focused. I wish I had been better focused on my financial plan. I was young and I had credit cards, you know, colleges give students lots of credit cards and I probably had about four credit cards and I had a blast. If there was any amount on that credit card, I used it. I used it all. And then I wondered who's going to pay for that because I'm not going to pay for that. Who's going to pay for that? I did a lot of dumb things. Um... Budgeting. I was a young mother. I, but what is budget? I had to work. I had to pay for my bills and my responsibilities and take care of my daughter. That was the extent of my budgeting. I had no real savings to speak of. And I wish I, I had imparted more of that 
onto my daughter because my parents didn't teach us that. They what parent really taught you? Not in mine. Let me let me say that. Not in my generation. I'm probably older than a little bit. Uh, I'm probably a little bit older than some of you. I'm in my fifties. Yes, that black don't crack. Anyway, my parents didn't teach me that um, you should save. There was no such thing as investments back at that time. That was not afforded to people of color. My parents worked. My father worked um, the majority of his life, and he provided a really good life for us. Hey, Daddy. He did. He provided a good life for us. But there was no talk about budget. He made the money. He paid his bills. My mom paid the bills, and that was it. That was the extent. It wasn't until I piled on mountains of credit card and credit cards and other bills that I finally got my ish together. I wish I had not cashed out on at least two 401ks when I left the company. Don't do that. Don't do that. I wish I had that time in from years ago. That was probably about 15 years ago that I would have had a really nice 401k right about now. It's not bad now. It's growing. I've made some really sound investments. So if you're listening and you're in your 30s, if you're in your 20s, even if you're in your 40s today, don't just save money. Saving is not going to grow your money. It will grow, but you have to invest. Invest for the future. Invest for your 40s and your 50s. I am learning that the hard way. I'm learning that the hard way. I'm smarter. That is what I do. I am glad that I learned. I wish I had learned that earlier. I wish I had been taught that. They didn't teach us that, but that's okay. They did the best that they could. That's my number two, what I would do different. I would be better focused on my financial future. Um, young single mothers, I don't care if it's $25. Find a brokerage and invest that $25. And I don't care if you put $20 every month and, and put it into that investment and invest in that. Learn, invest that money. It grows, it really does. Number three. I would not, listen, I would not have become a nurse. No, it was not my first choice. It was the choice I was left with when my degree in computer science and data processing did not serve me. Out of college, after I created all of that student loan debt, let me add that, I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to hit the streets of Texas, to be their next tech savvy programming, computer programming, programmer, sorry. Yeah, I got rejection after rejection after rejection. I was young. They all said you need five years plus just to come through the door. I was willing to go in as a uh, data entry. I wanted to just get in on the ground level. Ground level or not, they were not having it with this little chocolate sister. They were not letting me in the door, but that's okay. I didn't give up. I stayed as long as I could, but hey, we have to eat. We have to take care of ourselves. We took jobs. That I took jobs that had nothing to do with my field. So I packed up, I moved back to my hometown, I took, <clears throat> there was a, a um, back in the day, there was a program that was looking to bring more nurses into the nursing field. They don't have those type programs anymore. They paid for everything. I signed up for this program. I... I think I had to take my ACT again, and I've met all the standards and the criteria for a licensed practical nurse. In case you didn't know, yes, I am a licensed nurse. Sorry if I didn't mention that, but that's that's what I am. I signed up, 
took this program, they paid for absolutely everything. It was grueling. I was a single mother. You could not work and do nursing, at least back then. You, you could not. Those instructors were grueling. Oh my God, it was horrible. Anyway, Turns out to be, it was the best thing for me. I was young, I couldn't get a job in what I previously had my degree in. So I graduated from the nursing program, started off in skilled nursing. I worked in a lot of nursing care facilities. I actually like geriatrics, but after a while, you need to get a little bit of more skills under your belt. So. I branched off into home health, and that was amazing. I love that. And hospice. A lot of people don't like hospice. I love hospice. It was such a beautiful experience. But I say that to say this nursing has always been, there's always been a shortage in nurses. And I've been a nurse for 28 years. It has always been a shortage. So... I did start off in the clinical side. I did a lot of clinical nursing. My background was in skilled nursing facilities. I worked in home health. I worked in hospice. I worked a brief stint in hospitals. I don't know how you, I couldn't do it. I don't know how you do it. The doctors, I don't, never mind, never mind. Let's not even say that. I couldn't do it. Hospitals were grueling. 12 hours. I worked in the ER. Oh, it was needless to say i couldn't do it i couldn't do it i probably my clinical years were i spent 10 years uh gaining the knowledge in med surge and later into my career um fast forward in 2008 i had an amazing opportunity someone gave me an opportunity to get into the non-bedside i'm sorry yes the non-clinical side of nursing it's what I've been doing for the past 14 years with this particular company that I was laid off. I worked remotely, so the pandemic did not create that situation for me. But when I tell you it's a grind everywhere you go, I liked utilization review. I love receiving requests from the providers, wherever it came from, requests for inpatient, requests for outpatients. We have to review for medical necessity. I work from home. But by no means think that that was easy. It was like having a full office at home. This is my office that I'm working in, that I'm sitting and recording in. It was like everybody is right there with you. From the pings, from your team's meeting, from the long meetings that led to other meetings, it was stressful. It is stressful. So every part of nursing it's stressful. There were some days I spent 10 hours, 10 to 12 hours at my desk. And after 28 years of all of this nursing, I don't want to work 365 days. And I think I said that in my last video, and I'm not going to do that. God is going to make a way so that I am going to be working some contracts. I'm going to do some contracts. I did those in the past as well. I'm going to do a couple of contracts and I'm going to relax and travel and try to enjoy this life without being burned out. Don't burn yourselves out, ladies. Don't burn yourselves out. There's no sense in having bad backs and bad knees, which I have now. They pretty knees though, but they, they are not like they used to be after nursing. Nursing will break you down. It's more of a business now, and I digress. I'm not bashing nursing. It has provided a great life for me, but after this pandemic, it's like there was a time warp, and two years worth missing is missing from my life, and I am taking stock. So that's where I am right now. So to recap, I would do relationships differently. I would definitely handle my finances differently. And I probably would not go back into nursing. No, I would not go back into nursing again. I would not. It would probably have to be another healthcare uh, field, probably physical therapy, something like that. I should have done that, but I did not digress. So what would you do differently 
if you could do it all over again? Ask yourself. Those things will change you. Some of the things you probably won't, you won't have if you do it a little different. I do accept the choices that I made back then. I think they made me who I am. But going forward, I deserve to shave off some of this time and carve out some self-care, some international travel. Lord, I want to go to Italy so bad. That's where I'm going. And I am. I'm going to. First of all, I have to secure a new position. It's going to be in utilization review. Listen, licensed nurses out there everywhere. Don't think that you cannot. You, you're only cornered into clinical jobs. There are opportunities out there. Do the work. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing the work. Thank you guys for stopping in and listening to me rant because that's what it was. My coffee is here. I forgot to drink it. I will be back. I want you guys to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have some really great content coming up. I have some other healthcare uh, friends and we're going to sit down and chit chat about our nursing life. Healthcare life. I know other people other than nurses. I know lab technicians. I know therapists. We're going to sit down and we're going to chat about it. We're not going to bash about it because you got to admit it's a good life. You've had a good life. It's just different now. So please subscribe and I'll talk to you soon.